Hi, this is Alana Terry. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Jamie Hampton, and we're going to be doing another Coffee Break episode, taking your questions about prayer and having what we hope will be an encouraging discussion. So before we dive in, let's open with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you so much for all the ways that you take care of us. We thank you for this show and for our listeners and for the people who write in with these questions. And we thank you, especially today, for Gretchen and the question she has about praying specifically. And we just want to thank you for all your blessings. And we pray for continued blessing over everybody listening today. Amen. Amen. Well, so our question today, as Alana alluded to, is um, from Gretchen, and she asks, should we pray specifically or assume that God knows our needs? So her actual question was, why do some say that your prayers need to be very specific? And then on the other hand, others say that you can have an unspoken prayer and you can pray for others' unspoken prayers. I assume all prayers are heard by God, but it seems strange to have such a juxtaposition, make them specific or unspoken prayers work. So just kind of this question of, you know, we do throw those things out like, oh yes, you need to pray specifically. On the other hand, God knows your needs before you even ask them. So how does that all work? And I think that's a great question. Right. So let's talk about praying specifically. I can't think of an actual verse where You know, it says, don't pray in generalities, pray in specifics. So on the one hand, I think that maybe this is um, just a more Christian church culture, or maybe Jamie, you have, you have something in mind of, I mean, I I do think it's good to pray specifically. I just don't know that there's any sort of biblical reason to say praying specifically is better. Can you think of something? No, I mean, I could think of some examples where specific prayers were asked, but, um, I kind of feel like our Christian reason for that, the Christian culture reason for asking specifically is because when we ask specifically and God answers that prayer that is so specific that there's really no explanation. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if you were to say, um, like if you, a lot of times there might be a prompting, like for instance, I, I have this example and I know that this, you know, we're we're looking, we want to look into scripture too, but I have a personal example. So I had a boyfriend in college and I felt the need. I said, you know, Lord, I I had kind of just rededicated my life to Christ. I really wanted this relationship to be God glorifying. And I loved the idea of getting together and reading the Bible together and praying with a boyfriend. I had never done that before. And I thought that'd be really neat. And it's something I felt prompted to want and prompted to pray for. And so I was talking to my friend who was kind of a prayer partner and I asked her, I said, you know, I really want to ask him to do this. Is that too forward? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, should I, should I say that? Is it too early in our relationship? And she said, if there's any doubt, take it to God and, and just ask him and let God ask him for you. And I thought, okay. And I had never had an experience with something like that. But I wrote down in my journal, God, I just, I pray that, you know, my boyfriend would ask, um, ask me, would approach me to read the Bible and pray together once a week. And it was, I I can't say that God gave me the once a week or whatever, but I know that that desire was from God. So I wrote it down. And I don't remember how long it was. I need to go back to that journal and find out because I think I still have it. But, um, but he did within a short time. I remember we were on a, ru- on a run, like a jog around campus. And he stopped. And he said, you know, I've been really, I've been thinking. I, and, I mean, word for word, he said, <laughs> I, I think that we should get together and just read, read the Bible and pray together once a week. And I started crying. I mean, I was, nothing like that had ever happened to me. It was so God and so specific. It could have been taken, you know, either he read my journal and he was really trying to get in good with me or (laughs) God spoke to him. And I know that it was the latter because he was shocked. He's like, why are you crying? Did I say something wrong? Oh, that's funny. I think that is the reason that we kind of go to that, but I don't think there's a specific example of that. Um, I did come across when I was kind of looking into this a little bit, I came across someone that, that talks about 
Mary's a request to Jesus about the wedding in John 2. Right. I thought it was interesting because they referenced it as her prayer to Jesus. So yes, she's his mother. It's just a conversation. But I guess you could look at it as talking to Jesus. And so she said, you know, she said they have no wine. And Jesus probably already knew this because he was at the wedding. He probably heard the same things she heard, or I don't know, maybe he didn't, but, but he probably already knew it, but she brought it to his attention anyway. And as I recall, he even like protested at first and said, it's not yet my time, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. and she persisted. And, you know, I feel like that's kind of a neat illustration of that's not necessarily a specific request, but it's a time when there could have been an unspoken prayer or request. But my question is, would he have done it if she hadn't asked? Because he kind of even resisted a little bit. So that's right. an interesting scriptural example, I guess, of what could have been an unspoken request that may have had to be spoken. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But so I don't know. But my my first thought is that it may not be biblical to have to pray specifically, but yeah. I sure do love how it brings God glory. Yeah. It's certainly not unbiblical, <laughs> right? you know? Um, so yeah, I think if we can separate that, it probably makes your question, Gretchen, a little bit just easier to decipher that as far as Jamie and I can think, there's not really any verse that says, yes, when you pray to God, make sure you pray specifically. I think the argument can be made that the Lord's prayer it's pretty general, you know, it doesn't say, forgive me for this and that's and this and that's and all these other sins. It's, it's, it's kind of in blanket statements, forgive me my sins, give me my daily bread. Now the other person could on the other side say, well, it's very specific. You're praying for your daily bread. So, um, I think, I think either is fine. What's important is to remember that Jesus does know our thoughts, you know, even at the, uh, wedding, You know, he knew there was no wine because he's God and he knows everything. (laughs) So whether or not, you know, he had to overhear, he knows everything. So he does know what's on our heart. When we do pray specifically, it it could be because he's putting something specific in our heart, kind of like you, Jamie, with your one week thing with Bible study and stuff. Um, And so I feel like when you're praying for yourself, I think it's totally fine to pray specifically and sometimes when you're praying for others, if they don't want to share, I, I see them as two different things. I think that when we pray specifically, it's usually talking about the things that we're praying for ourselves. And then when we're doing, you know, unspoken prayer requests, that's, really, that's usually praying for someone else, right? Like you don't have an unspoken prayer request for yourself that you don't know about. <laughs> so when, you, when you're praying for yourself, you can be specific. Right. Um, Right. So this is interesting just to be like snarky. Um, are unspoken prayer requests effective? Like if you're just go up to someone and be like, yeah, I've got this unspoken thing. Could you just be praying about it? Is that less effective than giving that person the specifics to pray for? I don't think so because I believe that like sometimes I'll pray like, Sometimes I ask people if if we get a a note from someone through the podcast that says, you know, my son is struggling with this. Could you pray for him? Or I'll sometimes write back and say, can you please give me his name? Just because for me, I like to have a name. But then sometimes I'll say, but, you know, only if you feel comfortable because God knows. I mean, I know God knows that child's name. And even if you do the unspoken prayer request, I feel like there are times when I feel like a general prayer is more powerful. Like if I have not been given a specific thing to pray for someone, sometimes I'll pray, God, you know what so-and-so needs. You know what their body needs. You know what their mind needs. You know what their spirit needs. Just unleash your power in their life. Minister to them at those places. I, I picture it like, um, and I don't know, it's the sci-fi and me coming out. <laughs> I oh, picture- that's funny nanobots like swarming you know like uh-huh. like i'm sure i've read a book where there were nanobots that like I, I there was something where these nanobots like would uh heal humans and and mm-hmm. would locate these areas that were mm-hmm. and so that's kind of what i picture is god's spirit covering this person like a blanket 
targeting exactly what they need, whether it's a bodily thing, you know, maybe they're sick and God knows exactly what needs to be healed or God knows exactly what their mind is, you know, what, what hidden battles are going on in their mind or what hidden spiritual battles are coming at them, what attacks, you know, and I just picture it being like, like God unleash your kingdom in this person's life in only ways that you know. And I think that's powerful. That can be for sure. I think I'm kind of the opposite. If someone asks me for an unspoken prayer request, for me, like I, I don't like admitting it, but it's pretty close to in one ear out the other. You know, like most of the time, the the best I do is, okay, God, please help so and so. Now, if you it don't were, feel like you have, I don't feel a connection to what they're right, going through. Right, right. Um, now, if it was somebody that. I knew deeply, like if you called me tomorrow and were like, I really need your prayers. This is something I can't even talk about. Then I would know it was something huge (laughs) because up until now, I don't think there's anything that we haven't been able to talk about with each other. So in a case like that, I could totally see taking it to God in prayer and kind of feeling out like, God, what do you want me to pray for Jamie? What, you know, asking God to direct my prayers, but that takes a lot of energy and focus. And yeah. so if it's just kind of a blanket, yeah, I, I have this thing. And this, this is, again, me being snarky and maybe even jaded. Sometimes, especially like vague booking, you know, how people will go on Facebook. Yes. And, you know, like, is this manufactured drama or is this a real thing? And sometimes it's a little hard to know. Yeah. And it so is. in terms of me praying for others, it's harder for me when there aren't specifics. Mm-hmm. Unless I know for sure, you know, like if I can hear somebody's voice or see it in their eyes, like, and I just know that there's this huge, massive struggle that they can't even talk about. Right. Or maybe aren't allowed to talk about right. because you of know, like whatever. A, a missionary in a restricted right. nation or something. Right. Reading between the lines, I think I could definitely go into the warfare kind of prayer in a situation like that. But if it's just mm-hmm. kind of a like someone posts on Facebook, guys, I really need prayer. I can't talk about it. A lot of the time it is sort of in one ear out the other mm-hmm. for me, which I don't, I don't love about myself, but it, it's harder for the person praying for you if they don't have the specifics. No, that's very honest. That's a very honest answer. Yeah. Well, and I think another thing to kind of clarify is I think the scripture that we go to when we think about, well, God knows what we need before we ask him is this Matthew chapter six, verses seven through nine. It says, and when you pray, do not babble on like pagans for they think that by their many words, they will be heard. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. So then this is how you should pray. And then it goes into the Lord's prayer. So it's really an, not an answer to now don't pray specifically guys, because God knows exactly what you need. Um, Because like you said, it goes into the Lord's Prayer, which does have some specific areas of our lives, you know, and, and our, uh, my assumption is that it was meant for us to tailor that to, you know, our individual situations. Kind of like an outline. Right. Rather than just pray this direct, exactly word for word. Um, But it's really addressing the pagan babble, which is just kind of what we've talked about in other episodes about. I picture that being praying to be heard, Mm -hmm. trying to sound Christian-y, trying to use the jargon, um, I don't know, praying long just because you feel like you have to, which I know that Uh I fall prey to that when I, but some of our prayers, I remember, you know, the other day I was in the shower and my prayer was, God help. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, I don't think that we should look to this, well, your father knows what you need before you ask him as a an encouragement to be vague or general. True. Or a command to be vague or general. It's a it's a, an encouragement not to Babylon. Yeah. Babylon. <laughs> ha! At the very um very least, I think that what we can take from it is um that Alana just totally lost her train of thought. I honestly did have, (laughs) I had something I was going to say. Let me go back and look at that verse. Oh, the fact that God does know what we need. It can encourage us to, yes, pray for what you need, but also to pray with the humility that God does know best. You know, just kind of always keeping that open hand, you know, not my will, 
but yours be done. But that certainly doesn't mean that we don't pray for the specifics also. And I think that's kind of the, the double-edged sword. I, I saw something on Instagram the other day that was really, it was, um, it might have been Lisa Turkhurst or some, it was some well-known Christian person. <laughs> and it said, thank you, God, for not giving me what I thought I needed. Yeah. Whenever. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like, um, like those, um, yeah, anyway, it, it's like those times when, yeah, I, I did think I needed this. I did think I wanted this and then it went the other way, but right. God was still in it. And so having that yeah. kind of open handedness. Um, yeah. yeah, but I, I don't know. So I don't, do you have any other insights on why? I think it's, yeah, I mean, I guess I would just kind of leave it with if you can be specific, be specific. And if for some reason you're in a setting where you can't, it's not wrong to use generalities. Yeah. So, you know, we're, it's all good. <laughs> well, yeah. Or, you know, and the other thing is with the generalities, I feel like you kind of had the key to all of it. If someone comes to you with either an unspoken prayer or if you have a prayer and you're just feeling general about it, don't be afraid to be general, but go into your prayer time asking God to mold and form your prayers mm -hmm. to his will. Right. And he will. I really believe he will. And not that he's always going to give you an answer. I mean, I know that I've many times gone into prayer thinking, Lord, help me to pray the right way. And, it, and mm -hmm. I met with silence for weeks or months. Um, but to just go into prayer with beginning general and then moving towards specific as the spirit leads you. And yet always with that umbrella of God knows and God will work. And what our job is to, in prayer is just basically thy kingdom come, thy mm -hmm. will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I just think that's the crux of prayer. And the privilege though comes. And I, I, I do think that God meets us where we are. I, there, was a, there was a girl in our youth group who um, it was when I was helping with a youth group and um, she was not a Christian and she was very skeptical. She was in high school and she came to know God. She committed her life to Christ because she prayed, God, if you're real, um, make a butterfly uh, land on that branch over there or something, or, you know, I mm -hmm. show me like, let there be a butterfly to show me that you're real. And a butterfly flew by and, and she believed that God had sent the butterfly. Um, that was the beginning of her faith. I'm not condoning that or, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, suggesting that you lay out fleeces or demands because right. he's not a cosmic Santa, but for her, God, she was crying out to God. She wanted to know that he was real. And that was the only way that she knew to find out at that moment. And mm -hmm. I believe he showed her in that right. moment in his way. He, I, I also, there's another person who is now a believer that was an atheist who had a similar story that didn't turn out. He prayed something and I can't remember what it was, but it was something along those lines, like, God, mm -hmm. give me a sign that you're real. And nothing came. And it wasn't yeah. until years later that he became a Christian. Yeah. So I just think keep, keep praying, keep seeking God and be guided by his spirit. Yeah, I think that's great. You know, an exercise, if people listening want a little bit of practice, you know how we talked about it, it's harder to pray if you don't have specifics for somebody, because you do have to invest more energy in just listening to God you know, like if you were to tell me, hey, my son's got a fever and I need your prayers, I kind of know the things to pray for. You know, I've had a kid with a fever. I know what things I would want someone to pray for me. Mm -hmm. If you came to me and just said, I really need prayer right now, can't talk about it. I need to spend more time listening to God and, and being directed by his spirit. And so if anybody listening just wants to kind of develop that, because it is, um, I don't want to say a habit, but maybe like a practice that does needs to be exercised is really to just like pick, pick one person and decide to pray for them thoroughly with that kind of listening, you know, God, how do you want me to pray for Jamie right now? Show me the things in Jamie's life or family that are kind of in need of prayer, sort of that nanobot picture you were talking about, like what are the areas 
where, um, you know, kind of like a massage therapist are going to feel out where the tension is and work on oh, that. Yeah. You know, you're kind of doing that with your prayers. Show me the areas that are needed to pray. You'll find it's hard, <laughs> but the more you do it, the more you can practice some of the discernment and the focus that it takes to pray thoroughly for someone that way. I like that. And I think like we've talked about before, just like exercise, the more you engage in that, um, I think you're the the more easily it will come and the more clearly you'll hear God and recognize his voice and be able to discern it. Um, I mean, for me, it's only been in the last few years that I really feel like I'm just now beginning. Um, for me, it's kind of discerning the like negative self-talk voice right. versus yeah. as, as the enemy rather than, and, and acknowledging that. But I, I can, I feel like I can recognize the enemy's voice Mm -hmm. in in a negative way and and discern that from god's voice and you know cling to that more and mm -hmm. you know not that i've arrived in any way and not that it doesn't get harder and then easier depending on how much i'm praying but mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it's it's definitely like with exercise it gets easier and you get stronger your spirit muscles get stronger right right well, should we speak in a prayer, go on to our speak prayers for the unsaved? Do you yeah, like that segue? I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do our prayers for the unsaved. So if you are new to the podcast, if you've never joined us before, you may never have heard our prayers for the unsaved. And we just um, have made it a habit ourselves during our coffee breaks to pray together with you for the like one to three people that God has placed on your heart to pray for who don't know the Lord and just to encourage you to keep the list small at first and be persistent and consistent and not to give up until you see God working or until he releases you from that prayer. So um, yeah, we'll pray these together. If you enjoy these prayers, you can find them at prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved. You can sign up to receive one, um, one prayer a day in your inbox for 30 days and you'll get all of the prayers and, and be able to pray every day or as often as you want. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you freed me from my sin. I pray that you would allow me to walk in that freedom, that sin would not be my master. I pray the same for my friend. I pray that they would know the freedom and deliverance that can only come from you. I pray that there would be no sin that holds them captive no sin that will keep them from embracing you. Please speak to my friend today. Please show them that they're enslaved to sin, but that you can offer them true freedom and deliverance. Be near my friend today, Lord, and bring them to your salvation. Amen. Amen. And if you have questions that you want to submit for one of our Coffee Break episodes like this, you can do that at prayingchristianwomen dot com slash questions. We also want to encourage you to subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever it is that you're listening to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you haven't left a review yet, that would be lovely if you could leave us a review wherever you're listening to us today. Let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. God, we're just so thankful for this topic. We're thankful that you are our Father who knows exactly what we need, even before we pray it. I thank you that we can come to you with our specific requests and also with the requests that we might not even know how to put into words, God, and just that you're wise enough to take our pitiful attempts at talking to you and turning them into something powerful and world-changing, Lord. And I just pray that everybody listening would be infused with that power and inspiration to just go forth and change the world with their prayers by your spirit, God. And we, we love you and we're so thankful for all of your blessings in our lives. Amen. Yes. Amen.